All right, guys, welcome to your first tutorial for how to make a summer themed flat design using Adobe Illustrator. What you see here is similar to what we're going to end up trying to create through these tutorials, and it's going to take several parts, uh, several different videos, because there are many objects that we have to create. So let me get started by showing you what you need to do to get uh, Illustrator working for you. I'm going to close out all of my sections and show you what you need to do. If you don't have Illustrator here on your menu bar, you will need to go to Launchpad. And I don't have it on my first screen, so I do a two-finger swipe to the side. And there is Illustrator. And yours might look slightly different than mine because I've opened this program before. And if you are new to this, brand new, just trying it out, your screen might look slightly different. But what we're going to do is come over here to where it says Create New. And we get these options available for us. So since we are doing an um, art graphic, we're going to come over here and click on here. There are some preset sizes that you can choose from, but we're going to go ahead and put our own dimensions in here for our um, artboard. So the first thing you want to do is name your project. So you can just name this. I'm going to put my initials and you can name it um, Summer Flat Design or Summer Themed Flat Design, First Project, whatever you want to name it. For our dimensions, we need the width of this to be 850, but we're going to change from points to pixels. Pixels are just those tiny dots that are on your screen, uh, dots of light that makes up the image that we see. So we want it to be 850 by 600 pixels. And you want to check to make sure that we are in our landscape orientation. So we want it to be wider than it is tall. And so it changed it automatically for us. You do want to also make sure on our color mode that it is selected to RGB. These are the color um, choices that we're going to be using. And then we'll go ahead and hit create. Now you should have your um, artboard that pops up. Right now my artboard is a little bit bigger than what I want it to be. I want to be able to see the full screen. So right now I'm using my mouse pad to move it around. So to minimize it, if you hold down Command and then the minus button, it will shrink it down to size. And I'm also going to show you how to set up Illustrator so that your screen looks like mine. So right now, you probably have this button here on Essentials. I need you to change this from Essentials to Automation, and that's going to give us more options over here on this side. Up here, where it says Window, these are the different windows that are available for you to have open so that you can control and see what's going on. So you do want to make sure that um, you can have color selected. We will use color. You can choose gradient and have your gradient selected. We're going to be using that later. Pathfinder is another one that you'll want to make sure that you have open. And anytime these things close, you can always come back up here to window and open them back up because uh, sometimes we do end up closing them accidentally. And then you have other ones that we will probably use later. Like we're, we might use transparency later and uh, actions just shows you what it is that you've done. So if you don't want too much visible over here, then you want to make sure um, that you're closing some things that are too much. But it looks like mine's good right now, just the way I want it. So let me show you what we have on this side. These are all of our tools that we have available to us when we are using Illustrator. And we're going to be using um, quite a few of these, not all of them. But the most important one is this one here where your cursor or my cursor is. This is called the selection tool. And this helps us to select 
when we're creating our objects. If we want to transform our objects um, in a very specific way with more control, then we'll use this one here, which is the direct selection tool. And you see that uh, A in the parentheses, that's the shortcut command. So if I just hit A on my keyboard, then it selects that tool for me. For the direct or the selection tool, the sh shortcut keyboard shortcut command is V. So anytime I want to trigger that, I just hit V and it comes up. Over here, this might look different um, because you see this little triangle down here. Those are called drop down menus. So that means if you click on it, oh, sorry, it's got to be a right click, not a left click. Then it tells you all the options that are available. So we have a pen tool and then we have the anchor point tool. We'll be using those today. Here, if you want to see the drop down on that one, you can do a group selection or a lasso. This is um, for drawing the curvature tool, or if you want to draw um, curved lines. I don't want that now. This is our shape building tool. So I'm going to click on that. These are the shape options we have. Rectangle, ellipse, polygon, star, and line segment. We will be using these quite a bit. We have our paintbrush tool, which is next over here. We're not really going to use that today. Text is if you want to type in um, some fonts in there. Rotation tool, it's the eraser. We're not going to use that. Uh, we will use our gradient later. Our eyedropper tool, this is a great tool to use because it allows you to um, pick colors that are already on your artboard instead of having to type them in. And those we're not going to use. But over here, these are pretty important. This is for when we are filling our objects with color and having an outline. So this one that's here, that's solid, that is the fill color. So once we draw an object, in order to fill it with a certain color, we, this is what it will be right now is white. If we wanted to change that color, you double click on it. So I just did a double click on the left mouse and you can choose, you can um, slide this around and choose different colors. Uh, what we are using is um, specific colors that have a hexadecimal code and a hexadecimal code is a six digit code that is used for changing the amount of red, green, and blue that are in um, the colors or the light so that we get our specific color. So anytime that we need to change a color code, we can type that in right here. Or if there's a color you just want to pick, you choose it over here and you hit OK. And notice that that changed here and over here on my color screen. You can also adjust over here for the different values or hues that you want. And then this one right here, the little black one, that's our outline. We call that a stroke. So the stroke is the color that you will have um, surrounding your object. So right now it is black. So if I were to come up to my shape tool and make a rectangle, it would be green with a black stroke. I'll click off of it so you can see there. If I wanted to make that stroke um, thicker, then I come up here to where it says stroke. Right now it's at one point. So if I increase that number, oops, helps if you select it. So you got to select your object and increase that number. And you can see that that stroke value, the outline is a lot darker. You can always change the color of your stroke, just like we did the fill. So if I come over here and double click on that, right now you can see that it's black. Black's value is six zeros. So if I wanted to change it to something lighter, Choose a dark blue and hit OK. Ah, again, you got to select your object. If you don't have it selected, it's not going to do it. There we go. So it changes it for you. So you see each object is going to have this outline if you're in, using your selection tool. So these are different anchor points, areas that we can manipulate and change. Right here with these circles are, those are going to be our corners. So we can manipulate the corners and round them if we want to. 
and we will be doing that later today with our surfboard, which is our first object we'll make. So now that I've shown you some of the things that we have over here, I'm going to delete my object. Now I'm going to show you um, how we need to get started with our project. So the first thing that we want to do is create layers. So if you don't have your layers window, here's mine right here, I'm going to shift it over. If you don't have this open, come up here to window and make sure that that is checked so that you have your layers. And we're going to end up making um, seven different types of objects. So we need seven different layers. So right now we just have one layer. To add a layer, we come over here where it looks like a little piece of paper with the corner turned up. We're going to hit that button until we have seven layers. There we go. Now we need to name the layers. Each layer is going to be specific for what we're creating. Right here with the eye, that means that that layer is visible. If I were to um, click on the eye, then that means the layer is not visible. So any object that I create on it would disappear until I toggle back to having it visible. This yellow color right here means any object that I create will have the outline of it this color. And that's to help you to know which layer your objects are on as you're creating them, because that's very important. If I click right over here between the color and the eye, that's the lock. So the lock is for you to not accidentally delete your objects um, or to move them where you don't want them to be. It will lock it in place and you can't make any changes to your objects unless you unlock it. If you want to toggle or target a specific layer and make sure that you're there, that's what these buttons are for. So it helps you make sure that you're in the correct layer that you can do it or you can just click on that and then lock it in that way so that you know you're on that layer. But let's go ahead and name them because it helps you to not just say, hey, layer one, layer three. So let's name our layers. So um, we want to start down here at the bottom one. Whichever one is the, on the bottom is going to be the object that's on the bottom. And your layers are essentially pieces of glass, if you think of them like a piece of glass, that you are painting or creating your objects on. So if I have something big in layer 4, and then um, something small in layer 3, layer 4 is going to cover up layer 3. That might make more sense as we get into it. So you have to know that these are pieces of glass that are essentially stacked on top of each other. So let's do our first layer, layer one. We're going to rename it. There's two ways you could do it. You could do a right click on your mouse. No, nope, it's not going to let me do it. Try it again. Do a double click. That's what we need to do. Do a double click and it comes up here. If you want to change the color for what is designated for that layer, you can, but it's not that big of a deal. And then come up here and we're going to change this to background. We will be creating a background today um, in this one of the tutorials, probably not today's. Now the other way is if I could just click on um, the name and then it highlights it. So this one I want it to be a uh, seashells. We're going to make seashells. Make sure I'm spelling it correctly. Layer three. Let's make that one. We're going to make some crabs who go around in the sand. Layer four. Ah. Layer four is going to make this one be our beach towel. Layer five, I want sunglasses. We're going to make some sunglasses. Layer six, and let's see what we're missing. Oh, we're doing an umbrella, so let's make an umbrella. And then layer seven, we're going to do a surfboard. So now that we have all of our layers named, we'll go ahead and get started. The very first one that we're going to do is going to be the surfboard. So we want to make sure we are on that layer. So we have this um, layer is indicated with that little triangle there. 
and we're going to start by making a rectangle. So you want to come over here to your tools. Make sure your rectangle tool is selected. If it is not, then you right click. Make sure that it's there. The shortcut for the rectangle tool is M. So if you just hit the M on your keyboard, then it will activate. Or you can just click on it. And you notice that my cursor changed to what we call crosshairs. So we're going to draw, using our mouse, this shape. So if you hold down the left mouse button and then you start drawing it, you'll get it out. Notice that it is has that yellow outline and because I had it with that green color and blue stroke then that's what it drew for me. That is not what we want. That's not the kind of surfboard we want. So let's come over here if you changed all of this. I don't want an outline so I'm gonna hit this button right here and that means none. So that means there will be no outline on it. It's just the solid color. Now I want to change this green so I need to activate my fill color. Whichever one of these is in front is what is active, which means what it is you're controlling. So I'm going to click on the fill so it's in the front. And then I'm going to double click to change, get my color picker selected. And what I want to do is we're going to use this um, kind of an orangey color for our surfboard. Later, if you want to personalize your colors, you can. But for now, we're just going to do something that's the same so that... Um, you can follow along with me and not spend all of your time trying to choose colors because that will take a while. So what I want you to type in over here in our hexadecimal code is F9A03F. You can either um, just hit enter and that changes it for you. And now we have this nice orangish color for our surfboard. Now we need to get the right size for this. So I'm going to activate my selection tool. Remember you can just hit V. And then you notice we have all of these options up here for what we're going to do with it. I need you to come up here to where it says shape. And we are going to type in the dimensions that we want for our rectangle. You can always just try to when you're building it make it the right size, but it's much easier just to type it in. Now, if you have on your section right here, if these look like chains that are linked together, you want to click on that because we don't want to um, have the proportions for our height and width to be constrained. So for example, if I go to type in the size that I want, which is 20 pixels by 420 pixels, you'll notice that I cannot get it to be exactly as I want because it was constrained. So it's trying to keep that ratio of height to width. I don't want that. So I'm going to take that and unclick it. So I have 420 for my height, but I wanted my width to be 20. So make sure you're putting in 20 and 420. So you got this nice skinny looking um, stick there. Now what another thing that we want to do, do is round the corners. So we have 90 degree angles right here. We don't want that. So we're going to round all four corners, and that's what these sections are right here. So right now this is checked, which means that they're all linked together. So if I change one, all the other three will change as well. Sometimes you want um, the, all the corners to go at the same time, and sometimes you just want to manipulate one or two corners. So right now we want them all to be changed, and we're going to round them to as much as they can go. So as far as they can go is 10. The reason why is because our width is 20. So since I have two corners on both sides, if you divide that in half, the most either side could go is 10 pixels. So for those who like math, that's what we have there. So now we have our base for our surfboard. Doesn't look like a surfboard yet. We are going to fix that. So what we're going to do now is make sure you're clicked back on to your object. And we're going to do an effect 
to our little popsicle stick. So come up here to Effect, and then we're going to um, go to Warp. We have all these different options of what we can do, but we want to do Bulge. So go to Warp, then Bulge. And mine was already set because I had done this obviously before, so it saves your um, dimensions on there. So what I want you to do is make sure that the vertical right here is checked. Do not do anything with the distortion. And let's set that value at 30%. If you click on this button right here, the preview button, it's going to show you a preview of what will happen to it. Oops. Try that again. And that's what I want. Kind of looks more like a surfboard, doesn't it? So go ahead and hit OK. But now we have to do something because um, Illustrator did warp this for it, us. It bulged it out. But it doesn't recognize this section as part of the shape because we still have our outline right here. So we want to be able to have control of all of this part here. So we have to tell the computer, go up here and go to Object, Expand Appearance. And notice what it did. So now we have the outline is around the entire shape the way we want it to be. Okay. So now what we're going to do is make it look even more like a surfboard. And if you notice on my other surfboard, I had a little section out here in the bottom. So uh, Illustrator likes to, um, or graphic designers I should say, like to use Illustrator because they can create their shapes by combining and dissecting shapes. And that's what we're going to do right now. So I'm going to come over here to my tools and do my right click because I want the polygon tool. So notice my cursor changed again. If you do one click anywhere on your artboard with the left mouse, you get these options here will pop up. So don't worry about the radius right now, but I do want you to worry about the sides. We want a triangle, so I need three sides. So just hit OK. And now we have a triangle that is the same color, no outline, no stroke, just like what we had. And now I want to move it. If I try to move it right now where I have my crosshairs, I still have my polygon tool active. So as soon as I go to click on here on my artboard, I'm going to get another polygon. I don't want that, another triangle. So I have to come back over here to my selection tool. So now I can actually move my triangle. So I want you to move the triangle. See those red lines? Those are your smart guides. They help you to make sure everything lines up the way you want it to be. And you see as I move, it tells me the location of my horizontal and vertical axis, the X and Y. So I want it to be about right here. Yours doesn't have to be perfectly just like mine, but you do want a little section here because we're going to cut away um, what's there on top to make it look more like a surfboard. So in order for us to cut it away, we have to select both this main part of the surfboard and our triangle. If I try to click on both, it doesn't work. It goes, just swaps from one to the other. So hold down the shift key, then click, and now I've got both sections selected. So now what we're going to do is use um, what's known as the Pathfinder. And I already have my Pathfinder up. It's right over here. If you do not, remember, go back to Window. Make sure you have Pathfinder. And we're going to do um, minus front. So that is this button right here under the shapes mode. If I click on that, it minus what was in front. That triangle was in front. So it took that triangle away and anything that was underneath it. And now I have something that looks a little bit more like a surfboard. We're going to do a little bit more adjusting on the surfboard. So now I want you to come over here and choose your direct selection tool. Activate that. And remember we have all these little dots. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in for you. So if I hold Command and Plus, and you can see um, 
these little uh, anchor points. So to activate the anchor points, making sure you, you have your direct selection tool, I'm going to click on this one here. And notice that I get this handle that shows up. So I want to round out this bottom portion just a little bit. So if I take this handle and I kind of drag it, notice how that the outline changed a little bit and then it took that shape. I'm going to come over here to this one and then do the same. So round, ooh, looks like a fat surfboard. I'm going to change it just a little bit. There we go. So anytime you want to change, you hit just click on that anchor point and then you can change that pull that handle a little bit and gives you a little bit more control of your surfboard. So now I'm going to activate my selection tool back. And that's about the shape of what I want for my surfboard. So I'm pretty happy with it. And then now we're going to do some decorating with it. So I'm going to come back over here to my polygon tool and I want to get a rectangle and I'm going to draw a rectangle here onto the um, main part of my surfboard. I don't want the same orange color. We're going to choose a different color. So come over here to your fill and let's put in um, kind of a light pink color. So the code for this is F294. B6. Now we have this nice little pink color. You can set it where you want. If you want it directly in the middle, you can. But most surfboards, they have their design down here towards the bottom. And obviously, I don't want all of this hanging out uh, over the edge of my surfboard. I just want this section here to be colored. So again, Illustrator's great for dissecting shapes. So what I'm going to do is select both the surfboard and my rectangle. And I could do it by clicking on here, holding it down shift and clicking the other one. But I'm going to show you an easier way. If you come over here and click on the side of your um, artboard and just click and then drag that little box around, it'll grab both of them for you. So now what we're going to do is um, make it so that we can turn this into puzzle pieces. So if I hit the button Shift and then M, then that's exactly what it does. Each one of these is now a little puzzle piece. And notice next to my cursor there's a plus sign. I want it to be minus because I want to take this away. I don't want to add, I want to take away. So find the Alt button on your computer keyboard. It's next to your command key. And if you hold down Alt, notice every time I hit it, it changes it from plus to minus. So now that it's minus and this section is kind of checkered, if I click on it with my mouse, it goes away. Do the same thing over here. Hold down Alt, click, and it goes away. Obviously, if I click on there, that's going to delete. I don't want that. So now I'm going to teach you the best um, shortcut command that there is, is, and that is undo. If you ever make a mistake, just do Command Z, and it goes back one step. So if you mess up, do Command Z, and it'll go back to where you were. So now that I have um, that done, my shape builder, that I was actually able to um, choose what I wanted, let's activate our selection tool again. So now we have this all, oops, it's got to go back because that's still right there. That's still part of the object. We're going to group that together later. All right, now we're going to do a couple more um, designs to it. So let's do another rectangle. Let's put right here. And I'm going to do a um, darker color this time, like a magenta. So I want you to Activate your fill color and let's type in DF2754. So now we've got this nice little uh, magenta color. I'm going to grab them again. Do Shift M or you can activate your 
um, shape builder, change it to alt, and then just delete those there. It's looking kind of cool so far. Let's go ahead and do a little bit more decorating with it. We're going to add, um, I'm trying to find my directions. We're going to add another skinny rectangle. that and put it here but I don't want actually I kind of like that kind of like that uh, little magenta color there and then I'm going to do another one but this one I want to be light pink that color there so I'm going to show you how to do that so if you you can choose whether you want this first one to be the magenta color or the light pink it doesn't matter to me but we are going to do two so now I want to change, i got to get my selection tool back. I want to change this one to this color pink. So I'm going to show you an easy way to do it. I could go over here and then just type the number in, or I could come here to my eyedropper tool, and this is the one that I want to change, so I have to make sure it's activated. Come to my eyedropper tool, and then just click on that light pink, and notice that it changed it. I've got those two. I think I'm going to Put them together like that, kind of like that. Now I'm going to grab them both. Do Shift M, or go to your Shape Builder tool, and then I'm going to delete all of these parts that I don't want. There we go. Kind of neat. All right. Last thing that we're going to do. Um, as far as the decorating options, this time let's do some circles. So come back over here to your rectangle, rectangle tool, go to the ellipse tool, and let's draw a circle. Um, so ellipse is going to be more oval shaped. If you want it to be circular, you obviously have to make sure that your width and height are the same. So if you see that little pink X in there, then you know you actually have a circle. You can always come up here to shape and change it if you want to. So I'm going to do a light orange color this time, kind of like a highlight color. So let's do a pale orange, and that number or that code is F9D1AA. There we go. I like that. I'm going to put it over here. And it's a little bigger than what I want, so I'm going to change the size. So right over here, if you get to one of the corners, and you notice that I've got those arrows, you just click, left click, hold it down, and then you can change the size of that, make it a little bit smaller. Now I want another circle, and I could just come up here and just draw another circle, but I'm going to show you a trick for um, how to make a new one. So there are two ways, actually there's several ways, but I'm going to show you two ways that you can copy this circle. You could do Command C, that's copy, and then Command V is paste, and notice that I have another one right down there. Or an even easier way is to click on your object, hold down Alt, and then just drag it over. Oops, got to try that again. Alt, drag it over. There we go. Now I've got two. So that's two different ways that you can make a copy of an object. I want this one to be smaller, so I'm going to shrink it down. Put it over here. And I'm going to do one more. So I'm going to hold down Alt and make another one. There we go. So that is my main part of my surfboard. I am going to do an effect that gives it kind of like a shadow, and we're only going to do this um, on our surfboard and our beach towel. So if I come over here to my ellipse tool, or um, to my tools, shape tools, I want a rectangle, and I'm just going to draw a rectangle that goes right over one side from the center. I want it to be a darker color because I'm going to do a shading effect. So I'm going to come here to my eyedropper and get that magenta color. 
And then we're going to do um, some work on the transparency. So make sure you have your transparency layer is activated. And this is it here. We're going to go from normal to multiply. Notice that that changed it already. It still is super dark. So we're going to change the opacity. The opacity is basically how opaque or how see-through your object is. So if I lower my opacity, let's do 30%, then I can still see through this rectangle quite a bit, but it um, does a little nice overlay to the surfboard. So now I need to get rid of all the extra stuff. I'm going to grab it, do Shift M, or do your shape builder, and let's delete that section there. Here we go. So it gives it a little funky um, uh, look to it. Now right now, if I try to move my surfboard, I have all these individual pieces. So once I grab on something and I try to move it, it's just going to move that one piece. I want this to be all one object. So how we fix that is we go ahead and grab everything and then we can go to object group and it'll group it all together. Or you see the shortcut command. The symbol here means command. It's that command key that you have. And then G. So if I just do command G, now everything is grouped together and I can move my surfboard the way that I want it to go. So I can rotate it over here at the corner. And you see the arrows like that? That's rotate. Rotate it around. Move it. If your surfboard is too big and you want it to be a little bit smaller, you could come over here and just drag the corner. But what happens with that is sometimes the proportions change, so your height and width won't stay the same proportion. So they have a trick for that. If you hold down Shift while doing it, then it maintains that height and width proportion. Notice that if I don't do it, I can change it that way. I don't like that. I'm going to do Command Z to undo because I don't want it like that. So I am going to hold down Shift and kind of squeeze it down just a little bit. And then there's my surfboard. So that's all that we're going to do for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we're going to work on our beach towel and then the umbrella. So if you have time in class to go on to the next video, then do that. But before we do, let's protect our surfboard, okay? So I need to find my layers. There it is. And remember how I told you we had these um, special controls over here? So if I turn off the visibility, boom, it's not gone. You can see we have a little version of our object is right there in the view. So it is still there. We had just turned it off. But let's go ahead and lock this. And now, if you notice, I can't do anything. Nothing to my surfboard because it is locked. So we do want to keep it locked for now. That way we don't mess with it. And you can go ahead and if you want your artboard to be visible for everything, and you don't want to worry about seeing your surfboard, you just turn that off and then we get ready for the next um, object, which will be the sunglasses. But I'm going to go ahead and stop this tutorial for now, and then whenever you're ready for those sun, uh, not sunglasses, sorry, the beach towel, whenever we're ready for the beach towel, go on to that next tutorial.